Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. This is season four, Music in the Arts. I just wanted to come on before this show started to let you know that this interview with Jane Clancy from Hartwell Primary was recorded in the summer just before Jane was retiring as head teacher at the school. Um, so this is a really interesting look back at really her career and the support that she's had from her staff and governing body over the years and how they've really been able to embed music into their curriculum and throughout their school. This school is also part of the Cluster School, um, which I'm working with Andy Williams, as you would have heard in episode 41, a music project we're putting together to support all the primary schools. And so I really hope that some of the interesting things which Jane talks about and how she's embedded music throughout her school might be something of real interest to the rest of the Cluster Schools as well. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 4, Episode 42. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. Um, Today I'm delighted to be joined by Jane Clancy, who's the head of Hartwell Primary School. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Mark. Could you give us a bit of a background about the school, the type of school it is and the size, and so our listeners can have an idea of of the type of school that we're talking about today? Of course. So Hartwell Primary is is a rural primary um, based in South North Ants. Um, We are an academy. We were one of the first schools to convert to academy status, um, and we are uh, an autonomous academy. Um, We have 210 children on roll um, in seven classes. Um, Each class obviously is a pure year group. Um, I've been at the school for just coming up to 13 years now um, and have had the privilege of working with um, obviously a range of staff um, over my time here. Uh, Part of our, our school, obviously an important part of our school, is that we are a church school and we're a voluntary controlled church school. And therefore, our ethos reflects uh, very much the Christian values um, that hopefully most primary schools will be based on, but it plays a significant part uh, in our distinctive Christian character. As a school, um, we feel it's really important that we meet the needs of of all of our children. Um, And meeting the needs of all of our children uh, is very much involves making sure that we offer fantastic provision in all areas. Um, We are a school that achieves highly academically, and that's down to the hard work of our staff. Um, But we also place a lot of emphasis on the whole child. Uh, Pastoral care is at the core of everything we do against, uh, again, um, obviously that relates to our our Christian ethos. Um, We also... Part of that is also about making sure that we offer a range of provisions so that children can show and be involved in a whole range of experiences. Clearly, sport and music play a central part in making sure every child has a chance to succeed in some way. So that's a little bit about the school itself. Um, In terms of our music provision, um, music is at the core of, of what we do. I think it would be fair to say that all of the staff understand what music can bring to every child whether that is through listening playing um, at any level uh, that it can offer something to every individual and that includes the staff themselves as well Um, and we take pride in making sure that children see and appreciate staff who also sort of get involved in music and play instruments themselves so that they can see that adults and children can learn together um, and and can share in the wonder that music is. So for us um, we offer and want to offer every child that opportunity to engage with music in some way. Clearly, um, to start off with, that works in terms of the curriculum that we offer from reception all the way through to year six, and that every child has access to music on a a weekly basis. Um, We have some staff who are confident music teachers, but we have some staff who are not music specialists in any way. But we have structures in place through um, a scheme that we use so that all teachers are able to teach music to a standard that we feel um, is a good standard. 
in years five and six because we recognise that uh, um, by that stage, particularly in the school where music um, is a strength, our children are, are strong in that area and we know and recognise that we need some specialist teaching uh, at that level. So uh, we and our governors have invested in a specialist teacher to teach music in year five and six to make sure that our core curriculum teaching um, really does stretch and challenge our children and support them in being the best they can be in music. In that way, um, through that core teaching, we are able to excite the children about music and to motivate them to want to take part in music that goes beyond that basic teaching. So alongside the curriculum itself, um, raising the profile of music is really important to us and we, we do that in a variety of ways. Um, ways that allow the children again to celebrate um, and also recognise that and being involved in music, a large part of it is about performing and about needing to have an audience um, who appreciate what you're doing. And so we raise the profile of music in as many ways as we can. Um, we uh, have things like on a termly basis we have our music assemblies where every child who sings or plays an instrument and also some of the teaching that goes on in classes is reflected in an assembly for the whole school to see and hear and appreciate um, and across the year that means that all the children get a chance to to show their skills through that forum um, we also, we encourage children who engage in music outside of school, um, again, to raise the profile and to demonstrate what they've been up to. So if a child is coming up to an exam outside of school, then they will play in assembly. Um, it gives them that audience to practice in front of. Um, just last week, we had a grade three pianist who played for everyone. Um, and it was lovely for children to see that side uh, of him as he prepared for his exam. So again, it raises that profile of music. Um, we also like to create opportunities that take children outside school to show um, what they are doing in music and again um, to raise that profile. So that can be things like community performances. So for example last week we had the older members of the school, com of the, um, school community came in and we did a concert and choir um, sang and orchestra played and some of our ensembles also played. Um, so it's about um, getting the wider community engaged in, our, in celebrating our music with us as well. We also took the children to the Derngate to perform. Our orchestra performed um, in the Arts Festival recently and we were very proud to take 30 members of orchestra as a one-form entry primary school. That's a significant number of children to such a wonderful um, experience at taking part in the Art Festival. Um, we also, on an annual basis, we hold a music recital evening. Um, again, it's an occasion for children to um, don their finery uh, and for all of the children who've been learning an instrument, whatever their level, to play in front of parents, grandparents, aunties and uncles um, and to just celebrate music in our school. Um, and we are very grateful to the peripatetic music teachers who come along and support that event. So all of these things help to raise that profile of music across the school. And as you raise the profile, then you have more children who want to engage. Um, and that's really important. It's important that, um, that they see music happening, but it's also important that they know that we can help the opportunities to happen for them as well. Um, in terms of access, um, we've talked a little bit about the curriculum generally for our children and how we offer that. We also invest in the first access project, which um, teachers out there will understand what that is. Um, but this is where the music service um, use some of the funds um, in terms of a grant that comes through to provide um, a, a term's worth of uh, music tuition for specific children within schools. As a school, our governors have, have supported the fact that we, uh, we want two terms. We feel that a term's worth of first access gives the children a taste, but it doesn't really allow them to feel the success um, that they can achieve over two terms. And so we fund two terms of first access for our year four children so that they really feel like they've taken inroads into learning that instrument um, 
before the first access project sort of comes to a close. Um, it also, off the back of that, um, we have a tendency to get more children who want to carry on with their instruments because they really feel that they have had some success um, and they can see themselves making progress in that area. So the, the continuation for our children following that project, um, the feedback from NPAT um, who provide it for us is that we are a school that has one of the highest ratios of children that continue. And again, bearing in mind we're a one form entry school, we're really proud of that. Um, so First Access is a, a really good project. We chose as a staff, and we talked about this, about where it should be pitched. Um, in the beginning, it was higher up the school, but we've chosen Year 4 because we feel now that it gives the children time whilst they're still at primary school to continue to de develop that love for the musical instrument that they've, they've had the opportunity to learn. Um, and we like to feel that they, they have a chance to embed that before they move on to secondary and therefore there might be more chance that they will keep going with it. So that's why, as a staff, we chose um, to pitch our first access project at year four. That really is fantastic in as much as it, it really sounds like it's the ethos of everything, but it's not just about an idea and an ethos, it's actually about um, having a structure and an understanding and a plan in place about how these things are how these things are going to be and um, if you can hear some noise out the back we are actually recording it at school so that's uh, is, uh, is absolutely fine we're not in a recording studio and that's part of the joy of being able to go out and um, and meet people in in their working environment um, so tell me a little bit about how you think that the Christian background and ethos of the school makes music so important is it because of the idea of singing and 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 being involved music being an integral part of of, of church life do you think that's kind of where that stems from in the initial po process i think obviously music is an, an important part of service um and uh, the school being a church school um but i think mainly that um church ethos is about ensuring that every single child knows that they are special um, and that God created them in a very special and unique way and that as, as a, a church school um, we are here to help children to discover what is special and unique about them and we can't do that unless we offer them the widest range of opportunities that is possible um, and, and by offering um, whether it whether it is music or sport or the arts in a different way by offering that range of opportunities um, we're able to help them to identify that they have been created in that unique and special way. So I, w I think that that is where that church ethos really plays a part in us offering music as part of our um, of our unique provision for children. Yeah and that makes a lot of sense and when you were saying about you know making sure that every child feels special but also understanding their talents and like you say and in, unless in you experience the widest possible range of things that you can enjoy you don't know what those talents necessarily are so um and that's that's really important isn't it and to be fair it also links in you know really well with our growth mindset work that we're doing at the moment too because we want children to engage in music not to feel that they have to be the best at it it's very much about children being able to enjoy being part of music as they would you know in church yep. um, singing together as a community um, is is something that that is uplifting and we want the children to feel that so it is about the children understanding as we say that it's not necessarily about being the best at something it's about enjoying it and it's about um, challenging yourself sometimes um, but it's about making progress for yourself but about appreciating as well and that, as I said I keep repeating you know that word enjoyment is key um, and that's something that we stress with the children always it doesn't matter what level you play at or what level you sing at are you enjoying what you're doing and if the answer to that is yes then so be it you know mm. continue doing it and I, I think the whole progression is really important as well I mean when I was actually not so much at primary school but when I hit secondary school there was a really um, integral part of music and wind bands and orchestras being part of the school and it was my ability to see a whole process of how to get from just literally starting to learn to then maybe being in the junior band to then being in the senior band and then some of those people were in the county ensembles and then they were going to music college so even though it's still 
takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment you can see a progression of doing that and it sounds like that's the sort of thing you've created within the primary system everyone has the chance of doing obviously their school curriculum music but then from there with the opportunity to do the first access and then having an ensemble playing and having music assemblies everyone from reception onwards just knows that this is an integral part of what's available to them and so like you say when the opportunity arises if it's something they really thrive at they, they know they can just jump on the conveyor belt almost and just mm. ride the way to the top because because it's all there for them to have should they want it. Absolutely. And, you know, we have waiting lists for children wanting to take on um, music lessons because they have seen children performing in front of them. They've heard them and, and they've um, seen how we celebrate all of that. And it makes them want to be a part of it. And, and yes, you know, we will have our, our year two child who is literally, you know, been learning the violin for a few weeks. And then we'll have our, you know, currently we've got grade four, grade five um, trumpet players who play for county as well. And so you're right. Right. The children can see um, that journey and what it looks like um, and they are excited to be a part of it. They want to be the one that's standing up in front of everyone else showing what they can do um, and it, you know that excitement is, is what we want the children to feel about music. Um, and you know, we offer uh, the curriculum, obviously, is there for everyone. We're very aware that in terms of additional teaching, obviously the peripatetic music teachers come into school and work with um, children who opt in um, to, to that specific music tuition. Um, and clearly parents fund that. Um, however, as a school, we also feel that there are children whose parents may not be able to fund that and that part of our duty as a school is to is to spot those children and to be able to offer them that opportunity. Um, and so we use our pupil premium um, and part of our investment of, of that fund is to allow children um, who maybe their parents can't afford those lessons um, to be able to access that. Um, and that might be part payment or it might be total payment. And governors are fully on board um, that we, we use some of that fund in that way. Staff also work with that because they very much are involved in um, spotting children um, who have a, a particular talent or or show potential um, and and coming forward and saying, you know, I think this child might be really good at, um, you know, what what can we do? How can we help them? Um, and that's not just in first access where that actively does happen um, but that is you know across our extracurricular um, provision as well as our curriculum teaching so it, it's about making sure that the barriers for children to get involved are removed in whatever way we can do and it's about the whole staff team and the governing body being willing to engage with that and to invest in that as well because budgets are tight we all know that um, you know, we have to scrabble around and think carefully about where we place our fund. But if we believe in the development of the whole child, then I think music is an area that we have to prioritise and we have to say, OK, so, you know, where can we where can we take from? Um, you know, our friends of the school also get involved um, and we would use some of their fundraising for not to fund music lessons, but to ensure that our resources are kept to a high quality because nobody wants to be, you know, um, banging on a glockenspiel that's got half of the keys <laughs> missing so yeah. you know again the friends get involved there um, and there is that recognition that all members of the school you know recognize that importance of, of of investing in a way that helps all of the children to have that high level um, access so you know use of pupil premium is something that we we actively do um, but also when we set our budget we make sure that we have a focus on areas such as music um, and that we don't leave them out mm. when we're trying to make everything else um, balance. Sure yeah and, and how have you found that sort of transition into becoming an academy does, does, does it work in the, the same way if we were able to obviously 
in, in your time, you said you've been ahead for 13 years here. You must have seen the time pre-academy and now during being in an academy, but yet you've managed to keep that continuation and that growth of music going through. So how, how have you managed to do that? Has it been an easy process or do you find that now it's easier because you are an academy or mm-hmm. how has it kind of worked out for you? I think initially one of the reasons uh, why we became an academy, it wasn't purely financial, but one of the attractive prospects at the time was that we knew that we would take charge of our own budget um, and that it would be then for us to decide um, from the total pot of money what we did with it rather than our fund, some of our fund um, going to the local authority um, and so you know we did take control of it at that point. Having said that I think a great deal of fund now is being devolved to schools anyway. The, yeah. the role of the local authority clearly has diminished over the last however many years so many many schools have a greater control over a bigger chunk of their money now um, there is a sense when you're an academy obviously that you and, and especially as an autonomous academy that we very much highlight our own priorities um, we are responsible obviously for making all of those decisions and and we don't have anyone else telling us what to do um, but I still feel um, that what we offer is offerable you know whether you are an academy or not you know I would say and, and I think I've said to you before Mark I, I feel that what we do isn't rocket science it, it's about making sure you know it is about when you do your calendar for the year you put those termly music assemblies we set aside a week each term um, and you put those in the diary then so that you don't forget to do them yeah. um, because in our business it's easy to do that so um, I don't necessarily feel that being an academy has has given us um, an easier route to what we do. Um, I think, you know, it's something that is doable, but it is about having everybody on board and being committed and understanding what the children gain from it. um, That is the crucial thing. And uh, over your 13 years here, um, has the music um, grown and progressed or did you sort of inherit that ethos that was already in the school anyway that you've been able to f- allow flourish and continue or um, how's that work because obviously governing bodies people come and go and, and there is an ongoing transition of people that are um, in charge of the school H- how, how have you managed to sort of keep that going and, and how much development has there been in, in your time while you've been the head? Mm-hmm. Clearly, there was an element of um, good practice going on when I came. I can't take full credit for this. And equally, I have to say that um, the music leads that I've worked with uh, during my time here, um, particularly um, the person who was here when I first came, um, who was a strong musician herself, um, you know, played a central part in, in talking with me and planning and making sure that we put things in place that would help us to raise profile and to embed. So there's no way that, you know, I would want to take credit for where the school is solely. This is about a team effort. It is a continuous um, push and it's not easy when we are being bombarded from the outside in terms of standards, you know, in, in literacy and maths and core curriculum areas, you know, when we are so accountable in all of those areas now, um, and when, you know, groups, when we, are, when we are inspected and such like, and the emphasis is on that academic achievement, you really have to work hard. And I think as much as, as anything, that's what I felt I've had to do over the time I've been here with the support of a fantastic team of staff is to say, we can do this. We can achieve highly academically, which as a school we do, um, but make sure it's not at the expense of letting everything else go. Um, and I think that that's really, really important um, that you know you hang on to that and that you hang on to those fun things you know we do you know, when I came here I introduced carnival at the end of the year yeah. which everybody thought was wonderful and the entire school dress up we have a theme and and we drum our way around the village um, and we have artists in to work with the children um, in order to make sure that you know that is a, a high quality event um, and year on or biannually now that's an event that we do and and everybody says oh what are we going to do next you know how are we going to build on that so you know there have been things that I've introduced um, uh, in terms of that progression but more than anything I think it is about 
just keeping sight of the fact that this is really important um, and that our children deserve to have high quality provision in these areas um, alongside working hard in, in those sort of core subject areas as well. And, and I think I think you mentioned it sort of much earlier on as well. It's about the whole child. And so it wor- that as, as an ethos works in so many fantastic ways because it may be that it's um, music or sports where they thrive and so the academic side might be more of a struggle so therefore having access to that makes them feel like there's something within the school which is something they can really latch on to and support and also as you said you know enjoyment and fulfillment is so important so having that complete sort of wraparound enrichment feel of it there's something for everybody and something integral for you means that even if there are subjects and we all know in life there are things that we don't all necessarily like doing all of the time but when it's part and parcel of your bigger picture and actually having a school which gives you that bigger picture and that enrichment which just makes you think oh I can see everything that's available to me I think that has to enhance each, their academic side anyway, just purely because they're going to be happier and more fulfilled, and so they can they can pick and choose all of those things out. And I think, I think it's a really important thing to do, and it's quite a hard thing, like you say, in this day and age when the focus is often on that just the academic achievement or mm-hmm. or just results. That actually, if you can just see that bigger picture and just keep the child at the heart of everything the rest of it will take care of itself because you're giving them everything that they need. And actually when we see our children, you know, when when you stand um, at the back of the audience on a Friday evening in the summer term when everything is busy and you listen and watch those young people performing and you look and, and see a brass ensemble of, you know, eight children and a violin ensemble and an orchestra of 30 and individual children um, standing up with great pride in what they do. Um, they are the buzz moments. And they're the moments as, as teachers, as head teachers, that, that we think, do you know what, this is why we're in this profession. Yes, we want our children to achieve academically, but we want to also stand back and have moments like that as well, um, where we can take pride in the fact that we've offered that range of opportunities and and now we can see the children shining at whatever level they're shining at, but they are standing and they are shining. Um, And that for me is is why I do this job. um, And that's really important. and I think that's a, a fantastic point to end on because you, you can't get any better than that. And that's exactly it. When you know, when when you are in a in a room of people who are all shining and and literally just being the best people they can and really enjoying what they're doing, and especially within a school environment, then I think you really have something to bottle and 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 something which the children will remember for for all of their lives. And um, and hopefully, from lis- a listener's point of view. Um, If there's anything there that you can take away, it is that it's child-centred. It's the fact that it really is important that you see the bigger picture and how music can actually support children and also the emotional side as well. You know, they get the buzz of playing in an ensemble, which you don't get in very other many ways. Um, And also being nervous and actually knowing that it's okay to feel a little bit funny sometimes when you stand up and do an assembly. I still get nervous as a professional musician before I have to Mm. go and play. You know, that doesn't necessarily change. You just learn to deal with it and you understand it a bit more. But understand understanding that your emotions are an integral part of who you are and Absolutely. that's okay and those sorts of things which happen very organically when you've got things like music in the arts at the center of what you do and that's a sh- and it's a shared positive experience and I think that's probably probably the most important thing that we can take away from all of that so thank you so much for sharing your story and and the school and we're, we're going to be chatting to some of the music staff and we're going to have a little bit of here of some of the ensembles as well so from a listener's point of view you can get to see exactly what it's like from the classroom and also from the the ensembles and hear some of the children playing as well and i think that'll be a really great way to sort of get a whole picture of um of how hartwell has been so successful in in their music so thank you very much you're welcome Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.